today's episode of Toy Talk is rather unusual. You might even say fictional. The only thing that is real is the diecast car that I will review during our visit to Gotham City and Wayne Manor. Let's go. I am standing in front of Bruce Wayne's beautiful estate, Wayne Manor. Today, I have been invited to visit the super secret Bat Cave deep beneath Wayne Manor. Guys, we might even get to see Batman. So, let's go on in. This is so cool. Alfred is going to let me use the secret bat poles to enter the bat cave. I probably should have worn tennis shoes for this, but these boots will just have to do. Published by Detective Comics, later shortened to DC Comics, is an American comic book. Batman and Robin, their story and the story of Detective Comics. Detective Comics was published from 1937 to 2011. Restarted publishing in 2016. It is best known for introducing the popular Batman series in May 1939, volume number 27. Action Comics, the series that debuted Superman, became along with Batman, two of Detective Comics' most successful series. The series were published between 1937 and briefly halted publication in 2011. They resumed publication in 2016, and they are considered the longest continuously published comic books in United States history. Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson was an American entrepreneur who pioneered the American comic book, publishing the first such periodical consisting solely of original material rather than reprints of newspaper comic strips. Hey, there is Batman and Robin over in the Batmobile. Let's ask. Oh, never mind. It looks like Batman is on the bat phone with Commissioner Gordon. I wonder what supervillain is on the loose in Gotham City. Long after his departure from the comic book company he founded, Wheeler Nicholson's National Allied Publications would evolve into Detective Comics and finally DC Comics, one of the U.S.'s two largest comic book publishers along with rival Marvel Comics. Wheeler Nicholson premiered his first comic book New Fun Number One in February 1935. He was the first publisher to utilize all original material in his comic New Fun Number One, the big comic magazine. Other publishers used previously written material. Not only the size was bigger, but also the strips were all original, featuring all new characters specifically drawn for new fun. Besides original strips, new fun was the first comic to carry advertising. While all original material was a risky venture, the book sold well enough that 
National Allied Publishing continued to fill books with new strips every month. Detective Comics number one, March 1937, would become a sensation with the introduction of Batman in issue number 27 in May of 1939. Unfortunately, Wheeler Nicholson had left the company in 1938. That is the backstory of the origins of Batman. Now for the backstory of Batman's sidekick, Robin. Dick Grayson, Robin, first appeared in Detective Comics, issue number 38 in 1940. Young Dick Grayson was appearing with his father and mother in a high-flying trapeze act in a small town near Gotham City. Dick watched from below as his parents flew through the air doing a triple spin win, the rope snapped and his parents plunged to their death. Thus ended the legendary Flying Graysons. Dick's parents were a victim of a protection racket trying to protect the circus owner from such accidents. Batman and Robin are back. It looks like they're analyzing something on the bat computer. I overheard them say something about the Joker and the Penguin have teamed up to terrorize Gotham City. Whatever will our heroes do next? Bruce Wayne took young Dick Grayson, age eight, into his home as a ward and makes young Dick swear an oath to always fight crime. Bruce teaches Dick martial arts, and since Dick was a circus acrobat, Dick was a quick learner. A superhero sidekick was born. Written by Bob Finger and drawings by Bob Kane, Batman's co-creators. Although, Bob Kane would sometimes get credit as Batman and Robin's sole creator. During an interview with Bob Finger in 1974, Robin was attributed to a conversation Finger had with Kane. Bob commented one day about Batman. He said Batman was a combination of Douglas Fairbanks and Sherlock Holmes. Holmes had his Watson. Until Robin was added to the strip, Batman had no one to talk to. Ergo, enter Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin. With the entry of Robin in the Batman comic series, a trend was set where future superheroes were given sidekicks. Captain America had Buckley, while Aquaman had Aqualad. Flash had Kid Flash. And of course, Batman had Robin. The pair, Batman and Robin, were often referred to as the Dynamic Duo or the Caped Crusaders. There have been many versions of the Batmobile created. In each case, the Batmobile has been an integral part in Batman and Robin's crime-fighting arsenal. The most iconic Batmobile is the 1966 Batmobile used in the TV series, Batman. Let's take a look at the 1966 car. And here we go, guys. This is the classic 1966 TV series, Batmobile, from that TV show, Batman. It's a 124 scale die cast metal model made by Jada. It also has die cast figures. It has Batman, the Joker and the Penguin. Plus, it's hard to see him here, but Robin is sitting in the passenger seat on the bat phone in the car. It's got really cool Batman graphics. The Biff, the Baff, DC Comics logo there, Jada logo there, Batman on top. Over here, you can see the Batman logo there, and then you can see a good profile of Penguin and then kind of the back of Joker awesome packaging on the 
the back, you can see what's in the package. There you can see Robin right there. And he's, you can see he's sitting in the car, Joker, Penguin, and Batman. Classic TV series that comes with those figures, plus the Batmobile. Then over here, just the Batman Classic Series graphics. Really, really cool. Underneath, it has the item number of 33737. Now let's open him up. And here it is, out of the package. Boy, that was a bit of a struggle. Two screws in each of the figures, plus two screws hold that down, and then all of the cutting it out. Man, they really put this guy in the package. Let's start off here with the villains. They are die cast. However, I can tell right now his umbrella is uh, rubber. It's a nice hard rubber. So I believe is his arm, but his body is die cast and so is his head. He's in the penguin suit, Mr. Cobblepot. Then he's got his purple bow tie, white shirt, black coat with tails, uh, black and white shoes, his umbrella, white gloves, and then a white top hat really really well sculpted figures that they have come up with and he looks really nice you can also see the penguin nose the trademark penguin nose this figure is really nice it's got two little screws in the bottom plus some words right there about made in china and licensing and he was screwed down to the base next up we have joker another die cast bodied figure he has plastic arms which are folded together and then his a beautiful face right there Ugh. face no one could love white makeup it has the classic joker uh, smile with lip, red lipstick and then his eyes are in tampoed black with little weird uh, eyebrows he's got his green shirt purple tie uh, purple suit, black shoes, and his green hair. Now, his coat has the tails on it, and then he has all of the rest of the features. Nice, heavy figure. He is screwed down here at the base with the same two screws in each feet, made in China, and licensing marks. Last standalone figure is Batman. His cape is a rubber material got the uh, licensing and instructions and all that made in China on the cape there not on the feet he's screwed down with two screws he has Batman his utility belt and his tights and tight outfit typical this is the correct uh, get up for the 1966 Batman man costume gray uh, real dark blue gloves the dark blue there and the dark blue cape plus the dark blue hat and it looks really nice around on the back you can see the back of the cape and it is a really really nice cape these three figures surprisingly are actually a lot heavier than I would have expected them I also wouldn't have expected them to make them in die cast metal now let's look at the car I'll have to move them guys back a little so we have a little more room here This is the classic Batmobile from the TV series in 1966. It was also in the first Batman movie with Adam West playing Batman. The doors do open on both sides. If you look inside, you can see Robin. He does not come out of this one. The Robin figure is put in and you can't take him out. There's no screw to take him out. You'd have to take this whole base plate and the whole car apart. Underneath, you can see the jet engine and the exhaust going out to the back to the jet because this was a jet-powered car. And then there is the drive shaft to the rear differential. Uh, nice soft uh, rubber tires with Batmobile wheels with the Batman logo tampoed in red in the center of the wheels, the, them custom caps that were made for it. Batman logo on the door and then the red pinstriping. I was always a fan. This one and the 1989 Batmobiles were my favorite. The rest of them they can keep. Never was really a fan. The window bubbles are molded out of a blue, uh, clear blue plastic. Then here, here's some exhaust pipes. Trunk lid doesn't open. 
the engine hood doesn't open on this one. And then this little piece is right there, part of their equipment, roof uh, lights, all there. Inside, it's got the correct steering wheel, which is cut off at the top, a fire extinguisher, the phone, gear shift, nice dashboard, and all the stuff. And then you got Batman would be sitting in there, but you can't put that figure in. You'd have to find something else. And Robin is there on the phone in the car. Robin's door does open, and you can see he's there. Now, Robin's figure is not die cast. Robin's figure is all rubber plastic that's okay you can't take him out and he doesn't stand on his own so it doesn't really matter you've got the batman logo there and then the batman logo on the wheels all around really really cool on the back there's the parachute packs and the jet exhaust really nice there's a license plate bracket there but no license plate actually on it around the front the headlights here are all molded in the same blue plastic as the bubbles. Not exactly sure that that blue is quite right from the movie. I don't really remember. I thought they were more clear, but it looks pretty cool on the model. And you can see the front detail of the engine. They didn't, it's a 124 scale car and this is only like a $30 model. It's not super high detailed. They have been much much better models of the Batmobile made over the years including lots and lots of model kits of the Batmobile but overall I think they did a really nice job making this set especially when they added die cast figures I mean I would have figured these figures would not have been die cast I would have thought of them as uh, just being molded plastic and painted but they did a really cool job doing that going with the die cast metal doesn't matter that Robin is also rubber the rest is fine this is a really awesome piece from Jada and there it is the 124 scale Jada 1966 Batmobile from the classic 1966 TV show and the first original Batman movie with three figures that are made out of die cast the Joker the Penguin and Batman plus it's got Robin sitting in the passenger seat on the phone. Incidentally, Detective Comics issue number 38 in mint condition sold at auction for $107,550 in 2009. The dynamic duo, or the Cape Crusaders, has been around for over 80 years. May they last another 80 years. Since that comic book was so valuable, I'll bet you're wondering if you have any valuable collectibles in your collection. I've got a free guide that can help you out. Grab it with the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Go on and subscribe if you like this content and want to see more of it. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.